I'm in John Candy's house. What? On a rent. Rent. What do you do for a living? Lots of things. Where's your office? I don't have one. I know you're gonna dig this. Get, get, fu- get funky with me. going on how you doing today everybody so here I am in Toronto my hometown I've stated that many times and I'm here to do a video about one of my favorite actors probably one of your favorite actors if you're a regular watcher for my channel I know you love this guy and if you're just watching for the first time it's probably because you love this guy John Candy oh, Uncle Buck Del Griffith we love John Candy. He's one of my favorite actors. I had the opportunity to meet him. Here's a picture. That was before braces. Just a young teenager. He was huge. Big man. Big heart. Big smile. What a nice guy. Like, when I say huge, I'm, I'm talking like he was... He seemed seven feet tall. Just a big, imposing guy, but it's the sweetest man. And, uh... Yeah, I love John Candy so much. Like, I, I just, Planes, Chasers, and Automobiles is probably my favorite movie. Yeah, it's, it's probably my favorite movie of all time. And uh, yeah, he's a Toronto boy. He actually grew up in Newmarket, which is about 45 minutes to an hour north of Toronto, uh, to Sydney and Evangeline, that's the name of his parents. He was born on Halloween, 1950. And then when he was young, he moved down here to East York, which is a part of Toronto. And while well, there's something behind me that you can see that has to do with John Candy, but first I'm gonna show you the house that he lived in, his boyhood home. He lived here from about, I think, five years old till at least 20, maybe even maybe more, till he moved in with his, well, we'll get to that later. Now, finding this address was quite a task. Like, really, really, really difficult. I have my John Candy. biography it's not even listed in here this has got a lot of cool addresses and stuff I've had this for years but it's not listed in here how did I find this address because on Wikipedia they give a different street they say he grew up on a street called Les Mount which is just one street over that way so the other day I decided to drive up and down Les Mount thinking okay well it must be Les Mount that he lived at didn't see nobody seemed to know I talked to a couple of neighbors on the street yeah I'm that guy they had no clue what I was talking about. Uh, so then I decided to do some digging. Really deep digging. And this is kind of how I find things. And it's through his brother, Jim. Uh, Jim Candy. Uh, information about when he passed. I found the address. So, this is it. This is where John Candy grew up. Now, if you want to find it, I'm just going to show you right here. It's Woodville Avenue in Toronto. So don't believe everything you read on Wikipedia. If you, uh, I guess if you Google John Candy Woodville, you'll get to the same kind of information I did to find out how I did. And then property records and stuff like that confirms it. And here is John Candy's childhood home. Now, as you see, all these houses look somewhat the same. They're all very, these, these are 70 year old houses at least, but there's some newer ones. And there's that one, that's a newer one right there. And that actually is John Candy's boyhood home right there. Now there's been a lot of uh, reconstruction on it. The original house is still part of it. You can see right there, there, the windows are in the same place. And here's a picture of what the house used to look like. So the people that live here now have added on to the house a great deal. 
but it still is somewhat, somewhat similar. But that's John Candy's Boyhood Home right there. Right there. John Candy had a love of movies as a young boy. And luckily for him, right within a five second walking distance was a very, very popular movie theater called the Don Lands Movie Theater. And in that biography, it talks about the fact that he used to go here all the time, every Saturday for the matinees and watch movies. And that theater is right there and it's still standing to this day, the way it looked back in the day. It's now called Pie in the Sky Studios. I've actually been inside before. I don't know if it's open right now. We're gonna go over and take a look. But they do editing there for uh, various projects. I did something there a long time ago. It went nowhere, don't look for it. But yeah, John Candy would walk from this house right to there to see his movies and dream of being on the big screen himself. Did he make it? He made it. You see, Jerese, I'd made winning my whole life. And when you make winning your whole life, you have to keep on winning. So here we are walking the route from John Candy's boyhood home. Right there. Right to the old Don Lands movie theater. And it's crazy. For me, this is a shortcut that I used to take to work. This street and all these years I've been driving by John Candy's house. Never knew it. I knew about the Don Lance Theater connection to John Candy. I knew that since I was young, but I didn't know where his house was until just a couple of days ago. And this is the street I would always, always take a shortcut down. Very bizarre. And the street that they say on Wikipedia, Les Mount, is right on the other side. But that's not the right information. Wikipedia, get with it. We can laugh about it now, we're all right. The whole, uh... So there it is. That's the old Don Lands movie theater where John Candy used to watch movies. This is the old lobby. Nobody's answering the door. But you see they got the old popcorn thing set up. Here's where John Candy would have walked right in. Movie theater would have been straight ahead. Wow. And right over there, that's like the history of the Darlene Theater they've got there. I'll tell you about the history of it. Well, it used to be a movie theater there. I told you the history of it. And now it's like editing bays and stuff. So they're making movies where they used to show movies some sort of organ. Can you see that? It's really hard to see. All right, so standing outside the Don Lance movie theater, he'd come here on the weekends to watch movies. But where, where, where did our beloved John Candy go to school? Somewhere in this area, I'm, I'm assuming, right? You're assuming? Somewhere close? He walked here, he would have walked to school? No. His high school is really far from here. Well, it's probably about a 20 minute drive. How we got there by bus in the 60s? I don't know. Huh. Hmm. Eh, eh, eh. I, well, yeah, I guess I figured out the route. Let's go and see John Candy. Well, before I uh, walk into traffic. Wow. <laughs> I mean, that was close. <laughs> Let's go find John Candy's high school. You want to see that? I do. And I've seen it before. Let's go. I don't regularly give out addresses that I find, but I wanted to show you how I found this one. And, you know, just drive by, take a look. It is a private home, so be respectful. If you're in Toronto, just take a look. Don't be intrusive and film it. Uh.
All right, so here I am now at Neil McNeil Catholic High School in Toronto. And this is where John Candy attended high school. It's an all boys school. And there's a visual arts studio inside named after John Candy, the John Candy Visual Arts School. Let's take a look. Now this school is far. Now he would have taken the TTC, I'm imagining the TTC stands for the Toronto Transit Commission. That's what we, uh, what we call the TTC here, our bus and subway system. But in the mid sixties, he would have had to take about three buses. I would imagine, I don't even know how many to get here because this is far from where he lived this is pretty far and here's the school right here so toronto has a lot of high schools like i'm talking a lot we're a huge city and we have a fair amount of like giant ones but there's since there's so many districts and so many suburbs so many areas there's a lot of smaller high schools. This seems, I mean, I've been down here, I've been to Neil McNeil before and down this area. It's, it's a smaller high school for sure. This is pretty much, well, you don't really see much. You've seen bushes. This tree was probably here when John Candy went. But I mean, this is pretty much the whole school right here that I'm walking around. I see it pretty much goes from there where those vined walls were all the way just down to there. Right there. That's it. Not a big school at all. But he played football here. And after he graduated from Neil McNeil Catholic High School, he went to Centennial College. But he dropped out. And became guess what? A salesman at Eden's, which was a department store in Toronto, was the biggest. The Eden Center is still there in downtown Toronto, named after Eden's, but I don't think there's Eden's there. No, there isn't. Eden's was like the biggest department store in Toronto. And there was a few of them. And John Candy worked at the one I believe on College Street. So he dropped out. But see, when he was in Centennial College, he was taking journalism. But he started slowly taking more theater courses and then decided to pursue a career in theater. But back then, as it is now, making as an actor isn't not that easy. So he also became a paper salesman, not a shower curtain ring salesman, a paper salesman. All right, now I'm gonna take you somewhere else having to do with John Candy. That's very, very, very special to him and his girlfriend, Rose. Let's go. So in April of 1979, John Candy got married. And it was right here. Right here. He married his beloved Rosemary. And I don't have any uh, pictures of the wedding. I was trying to find pictures like him and his like tux. Rosemary as a bride. Couldn't find any online. I did find this, however. Close enough. You look good. John Candy, right there. That's where he got married. This is on the University of Toronto campus, St. Basil's Catholic Parish. I have a feeling it looked a lot different back then. Some of these things would not be around. 
Toronto's really grown a lot. And it's constantly, constantly, constantly growing. But the church remains. It's pretty impressive. It's really, really beautiful. And of course, I bet you know what that sign says. And that one too. Nobody's getting in. COVID. All right, so the next place that we're going to go have to do with John Candy is... Well, you'll see when I get there. And think of everything, or everyone you know that has to do with comedy in the 70s, 80s, 90s, and beyond. This place is very special. It should be on like the National Registry of Historic Places, or wherever that, you know, it should be a museum. This place is really cool. I've been there before. I'm excited to show you. It's not too far of a drive. It's rush hour now. We're gonna go together. Come along. This is the big one. What's with her? Oh, she had a little accident over the weekend. Got hit in the head by some lightning. <laughs> oh, it's not funny, Freddy. It's not funny. I'm sorry. That's not funny. That's not funny. Besides, she's okay. She can still do certain things around the office. Like what? Jumpstart a car? <laughs> Jumpstart a car. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So just walking over to John Candy's house right now. Now, I, I haven't really given the history of John Candy. Like, I mean, he was a paper salesman. He worked at Eaton's. Then he started getting uh, acting jobs. And from there, led to Second City. The Improv Group. He went to Chicago. He was in the Toronto Troop, and then he went to Chico uh, the Chicago Troop. And then Second City decided that they were going to start a TV show called Second City Television, SCTV. And many of the ideas for that show were born in this house. And of course, after Second City, which was aired in Canada only, got picked up by NBC, and it became well, SCTV. We're going to talk about that on a separate video. I've got stuff planned about, about Second City. And then, of course, John Candy went on to star in 1941. Uh, Armed and Dangerous. Then, Planes, Chairs, Automobiles, Uncle Buck, Home Alone, Only the Lonely. You name it. In the late 80s and 90s, early 90s. Uh, Canadian Bacon. His last film was Wagons East. Sadly, that's where he passed away in Mexico filming that movie. This house has so much history connected to it, not just because of John Candy, but because of Second City. Eugene Levy and Martin Short rented this house out from 1973 to 1978. And then, John Candy. <sighs> Radio works, clear as a bell. Quiet, this is a very busy road. This is Avenue Road in Toronto. Yeah, Avenue Road. It's like calling it a street, Street Crescent. Doesn't make any sense, but it's Avenue Road. But yeah, Eugene Levy, Martin Short, rented this out from 1973 to 1978. Then John Candy and Rose moved in. And the landlady came to their wedding. Yeah, let's go take a look at this house. So this is the house. This is the famous Second City House in Toronto. This is where it all started, right here. All the ideas for Second City were born out of this house. Eugene Levy, Martin Short, and then John Candy right here. Would you maybe want to see the inside of the house? The inside of John Candy's house, what it looks like? Where all the famous parties were Dan Aykroyd, Gilda Radner, Andrew Martin, Catherine O'Hara, Paul Schaefer. Should I say, I say them a little slower? Dan Aykroyd, Gilda Radner, Catherine O'Hara, Paul Schaefer, Andrew Martin, Eugene Levy, Martin Short, and then John Candy. Joe Flaherty, all right there in that house. Do you want to see inside? I think I can pull that off for you. Let's go inside. So a very special thank you to the people that were working on the house and allowed me to come in and take a quick look around when I told them it was John Candy's house. Very sweet of them. Just to give you a bit of history of the house, 
a number of the SCTV cast members met during the production of Godspell in Toronto, and it was during that time that Martin Short and Eugene Levy rented the house. So there were Godspell parties there all the time. Kilda Radner, Victor Garber, Andrea Martin, Paul Schaefer, and Dan Aykroyd was a regular fixture of that house, and he talks about it a lot, and especially in the front room. This is going to be the backyard there. I'm sure there are lots of parties out in the backyard, but this front room was where a lot of them were held. So right inside that house. How awesome is that? Thank you very much to the people that are uh, renovating right now. Let me take a look inside. That's John Candy's house. And you just got to see inside of it. Tiny, imagine all the parties. You read that John uh, Candy biography book, Dan Aykroyd talks about all the parties that go on in there, or went on in there. There should be a plaque outside, like he, Dan Aykroyd says, there should be a plaque outside. There really should. Crazy. That's John Candy's house. Ah. And the house that I showed at the beginning, his childhood home, was owned by the family until 2011. So while John Candy was a giant superstar, his family still owned that house, and his brother still lived in it. They sold it though, like I said, in 2011. This John Candy's house. And you know the beginning of SCTV, when they throw the uh, TVs out the window? John Candy came up with that idea right here. Throwing out the TVs out the window. That's for another video though. That's actually not too far from here. I could include it in this video. Peace out. I love John Candy. So do you. That's his house. I like, I like me. My wife likes me. My customers like me. Cause I'm the real article. What you see is what you get.